Hi everyone, welcome to Build's Character, and today we've got Lauren Urban, our community manager, and also uh, extraordinary when it comes to the d d Beyond character sheet. Uh, certainly, I'm pretty obsessed. I make probably a new character every day, um, or I readjust a character every single day. I'm always messing around in the character sheet, but there are so many more options than when I started three years ago now, and they're all very fantastic, especially if you're an artificer. There's lots of really cool things in the character sheet for you, I will say. And if you like creatures and all kinds of weird stuff. So let's jump in, Lauren. Like we have kind of like a, not I wouldn't say a top 10, but we've got like most requested or most, you know, people that have asked you these, these questions in the community about how to use the character sheet. Uh, what should we start off with here? Ah, uh, there's so much. So. I talked to my uh, our crew of moderators, who are usually the people who help out if you come to our Discord or our forums, um, if you are getting questions answered on any of our social media. We have a crew of amazing and awesome people who answer questions as, as often and as frequently as we can. It's not just me, because there's, there's a lot of people who play D&D &D and I couldn't keep up with everybody. So I asked the moderators and I said, hey, when it comes to customizing your character sheet, what are the things that people ask you about all the time and we'll take some questions from chat and i've got some other things that we can talk about but i literally just have a list of things that people say i wish i knew how to do such and such and such and such so i've created uh kaiser here is a ridiculous character because i'm shocked <laughs> and i am shocked that this character is ridiculous and also by the way some <laughs> Lauren Urban doesn't only only have to do this for the community, but she does it for me as well when I have a question, <laughs> which to is totally unfair. No, it's it's not unfair. That's literally my job. So I, that I can't is... believe you made an Eric Kokra. I know, right? Wow. Well, <laughs> so we're not going to get into homebrew, or else I totally would have homebrewed something. This is literally without too much homebrew. This is stuff that you can do to customize your own character sheet, and so of course I'm going to pick an Aarakocra, and then for reasons that will become obvious shortly, this is a weird multi-class that I uh, maybe put some strange numbers into a few of my stats in order to make work. Because, you know, the cleric rogue wizard is, is a thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, I guess. <laughs> but we're going to show off a whole bunch of stuff, and instead of sw switching between four or five different characters, I thought Kaiser here is just going to be our go-to character to do all sorts of fun things. Fantastic. So... One of the main things we get asked about a lot, one of the things that comes up a ton is customizing weapons, spells, things like that. There's a lot of people who think they have to homebrew things in order to get the awesome thing that their DM has done for them in a game. So, mm -hmm. but a lot of things you can just do right in the character sheet without having to re remake a weapon. Uh, for example, you can homebrew a lot of the stuff, or you can just go into any of these weapons and have fun with them. So for example, uh, I've got a silvered light crossbow here, right? which I've customized a lot of. And the best way to know if you can home, if you can customize anything in your character sheet is click to just it. click on it. Just click just... on it and see what happens. And most of the time what will happen is this little sidebar will pop out and you can do things like customize. So let's go into this crossbow. You can see I've actually named it because I made it a silvered crossbow because why not? Uh, I've told it to display as an attack, which is a thing most people miss. Right. If you have a weapon that you use a lot, if you have a spell that you use a lot, you can tell D&D Beyond to display it right in your character sheet right here so that you don't have to be constantly flipping between things. That's such a great uh thing in so many ways a if you've like uh homebrewed a weapon um it may not necessarily pop up you know immediately in your actions and also if you know for some of us i forget to use spells all the time that i like that i know i should be using that helps remind me when i'm in the game like if i click that and that spell is now present uh, uh you know like front and center that's really helpful for me, especially like when you're in the moment um, and you're like, ah, that spell that I always forget that I have or that, you know, whatever, or the, this new weapon um, that saves me a lot of time of a lot, a lot of regrets. <laughs> right. You know, you and you might have a signature spell that your character likes using a lot. So you can come in, you know, yeah. my my 
uh, ridiculous character here. My wizard has ice knife. Well, I've displayed ice knife as an attack because Geyser is going to use that all the time. Where it's really, really useful is in reactions. So if you constantly forget either for bonus actions or reactions that, oh yeah, I've got shield. You can just have it displayed yeah. as a reaction. So you can either just scroll down for all, or if you go over here to reactions, look, yeah. there, there's there's my shield. So you can have it displayed all the time. Yeah. You can, uh, you know, for a bonus action, you can say a uh, spiritual weapon and have it displayed there all of the time. And all you, you do this do... all by clicking it. Yep, go into and, customize, and, display and as an attack. Display as an attack. And so even though it's not an attack, like shield it's going to show up in your reactions and that's something important to know that this yeah. is like yeah this will still pop up so the, like it's not technically an attack but it's your like it's like displaying in your attack bar immediately front and center of your action bar exactly this is basically is it going to display in this actions all right here and you can see i've i've made a bunch of stuff uh, available yes, to you have. Way. like <laughs> there's shock and grasp there's there's the mace um i i happen to also be a rogue because why not? Now rogues get to do wield stuff and hit with their offhand. And we get a lot of questions. How do I do that? Especially now that you can click on your damage and roll the dice. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've got this plus one dagger here, um, which I've got displayed. But I have a second dagger that is my bonus action. Because I'm dual wielding daggers. Because why not? Right. Well, if you go in here... If this is the weapon that you want in your offhand all of the time, you can tell it dual wield. Mm. And then it will show up here. And not only will it show up here, it'll show up here with the correct amount of damage because yeah. depending on the type of character you are, dual wielding that offhand attack does a different amount of damage. It often won't include a proficiency modifier, or maybe it won't include a, a strength or dexterity modifier. Right. You need um, that feat to, to, to get that to work typically. Or, or not, not the feat, but the, uh, yeah, the fighting style. Exactly. Or you need to be that kind of rogue or whatever yeah. it is. So it actually shows up here and you can see it, it has the correct plus to hit and it's right. got the correct damage. Um, unlike, say, my awesome dagger up here, which adds in the rest. So that's how you dual wield. We get that all the time. And you can do that with any weapon. Um, you just need to tell d, d Beyond what's the weapon you are using on your offhand. You say dual wield, and then it'll it'll show up in the, the correct spot, um, usually in your bonus actions. So dual wielding is, is a thing we get all of the time. We'll come back over here. Uh, I've I've done all sorts of, of fun things. I got magic missile sitting here. It's yeah. uh, we've got it displayed as an attack. That's another one that's also good to have. Um, that silvered light crossbow. It's not just that it's displaying as an attack and silvered. Um, I got a giant damage bonus on this thing. This is a massive beefy crossbow. Because my... <laughs> you got a 20 damage, exactly. damage bonus. <laughs> so this is good for if your DM has given you a slightly altered weapon. If you've been able to do something kind of different, you don't have a complete custom homebrew weapon, but you just maybe you get a little bonus to your damage because it's massive. Uh, maybe it's super heavy. Maybe this is a hundred pound silver light crossbow. <laughs> I love it. And there you I go. Love that, it. it changes right there. Uh, yeah. let, let's not do that because I like to be able to fly. Um, maybe you get a bonus to hit with this. Maybe mm -hmm. you crafted this crossbow yourself. And while it works like a normal crossbow, you know it inside and out. And so you, you get a plus five to hit with it. And all of these changes will show up right here. So now I've got <laughs> a ridiculous bonus to hit for my crossbow. And this is fantastic because you don't necessarily have to homebrew something uh as a magical item and and this recently came up with a discussion i had with lauren because i was trying to make uh you know my character has a coin that's going to be start using it as like a, a coin of returning attack because i why not that sounds creepy to me uh, that sounds some more <laughs> way creepier to me than a lot of things and, and as far as making damage i couldn't figure out how to do it because it was going to show up as a war hammer no matter what i did um or a throwing axe or something like that Lauren suggested you can just make an attack type. Yep. Can you run me through that? How you just make something completely unique? Yep. So you can actually do this for anything. Um, Kaiser, none of you know this, but Kaiser is a dance fiend. Uh, <laughs> 
he is, uh, they are amazing at dancing. Actually, they kind of suck at it. However, when they <laughs> dance, they dance so badly that they do psychic damage. And so I have an attack here that's literally called Dance Party. So, uh, cause Kaiser got a, a special action in where Kaiser starts to dance. It's really bad. So you'll probably take psychic damage. Lauren Urban, you are not only, you are an American and Canadian treasure. <laughs> oh, thank you, Oki. So this is just built in the character sheet. And this is incredibly useful because sometimes it's easier to just put it into the character sheet. Uh, you did this for me a while back or Kira gained a breath weapon that she doesn't normally have. And so you just went into my character sheet and added a custom thing into right. it. Yeah. Um, and that's what I did with the dance party. And so you can see when you add a custom action, it gives you all these options. You can display it as an attack, you can name it, you can give it the snippet, uh, you can give it a range. In this case, I yeah. um, Kaiser does this and it's an AOE attack of uh, anything within 20 feet. It's an action, it's a wisdom saving throw, it, you know, everything that you would normally get. But instead of having to homebrew this ability or create it as a feat or create it as a spell or any of that, yeah. I literally just went and created this. And so now I've got a dance party and I can say, you know, oh, do, do a wisdom saving throw uh, or else you get a whole bunch of psychic damage, which is always fun. It's it's so versatile. Oh, I was wow. really Doing well on that. some serious psychic damage. That was a rough dance party. Uh, yeah, 66. You know, Kaiser's it, a bad dancer. It's so quick and so immediate. You see how quickly you can do this yep. on the fly. Uh, because, like, obviously, when you want to, like, make a very specific magical item, it gets very crunchy, you know, or a subclass or whatever. But, you know, this, this opens up to, like, well, if your DM tells you, you have claws now, you just do. <laughs> Yep. You can just you can just add that that way, and then you have claws. You can just say like yeah, yeah I have talons. I have, you know, uh, I have this new weird special ability. I've been cursed by the the you know the dark powers of Ravenloft, and now I have this thing. You can do this on the fly very quickly, just without ever leaving the front of your character sheet, and that is really impressive. Um, it saved me so much time and stress once I was told that I could do it. I had forgotten and, uh, it's, it's fantastic. So yeah, if a DM gives you something really cool or you have a cool idea for a different type of attack, um, this gets you there very quickly. I love it. Also the dance party is amazing. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, everybody loves Otto's irresistible dance of, of awfulness basically is what that is. <laughs> um, and Obviously, homebrewing something will give you a lot more options and a lot more yeah. um, of that crunchiness that you were talking about. And also, you can share it. So if this is something that you're thinking, if it's a weapon that you want to be able to give to somebody else yeah. or something like that, it might be better to homebrew. But for a lot of the stuff that happens to characters, that this is very specific to Kaiser, like, why go through all of that? And a lot of that on our main actions page is right here in Manage Custom. If you go into Manage Custom, it opens up this sidebar. Look, there's my dance party. I can remove it. I can say, oh, I, I know I've learned how to dance. Mm. And so I'm better at dancing oh, now. Oh, you have no power now. Yeah, no, no, Kaiser is useless without, without their dancing. Uh, or you can add a new action. So you can make it something general, a spell, or a weapon. Um, and general is the way that you get the odd stuff that isn't just I'm attacking. Okay. Um, and so for uh, example, you're talking about doing um, uh, rogue sneak attack damage. If you want it to show up here, now it, it does show up if you are a rogue, it's one of the reasons Kaiser is a rogue, sneak attack does show up. It's down here in other actions. Um, because it's something else. It, it basically just happens and you right. have to know when it happens. So if you look at your other stuff, if you are a rogue, look, eh, if I get sneak attack, there it is. And I get to roll it right here. That's um, fantastic. But you can make it so that it just shows up in your, your main attack. Uh, so if you want the ease and ability of going, all right, I'm gonna attack with my dagger. I'm gonna do the damage. I'm gonna do psychic damage. It can be right there. So it's, a, it's another way of customizing. Now, isn't this, um do you no know, but, but once are we stuck with one particular dice type or can we layer dice types 
Uh, for this, it's one specific dice type so far. Right. I know being able to mix and match all ty- all types of damage is something a little further down the road. Right. Uh, so right now, the dance party only. If I wanted the dance party to do sixty six psych- psychic and then uh, sixty eight something else, I'd have to make that other mm. that other thing. Right. Um, so, but but this is really nice because uh, you know I I I play a warlock that can smite. Uh, this is very functional. I, I can now just put my smite in there, the dice. I don't have to like add all the dice on the left side of the screen that I'm using with my smite. I can just put it in as one of my attacks and also a reminder that I can do this thing, Yep. Um, which is super helpful as well. And, and then that's just kind of done for me. C- certainly that's a custom job and it's not going to update naturally, but it's, you know, if you've got something like that, this is a great way to like either remind yourself or just have those dice ready, uh, which is great. Exactly. Playing a game. A lot of this homebrew stuff is reminders. It is the equivalent to having the paper character sheet in front of you and you've scribbled a note. It's it's that moment way back in the day in Critical Role where Laura Bailey was forgetting to Hunter's Mark. And so they had the, the blackboard behind her and they would just write Hunter's Mark <laughs> to remind her to Hunter's Mark things. That's that. You can literally put anything you need here. And most of these things have notes that will show up. So you can see, you know, if I click on dance party, I can I can see what it says there. If I make changes to, um, you know, how this dagger looks, I can I can change its name and I can also make notes. So if I want to remind myself, oh, this is the dagger I only use on beholders for reasons, you can do that. So a lot of this is uh, functional, but a lot of this is also just these are the notes you make in your character sheet to remind you of doing the thing to make life easier because you'll you'll do the role playing. The role playing is awesome. This is to help with the crunchy bits. And um, and and also you can do it for some other things. I have a real quick question. I don't know if you can do this really quick on the fly. You do our our character sheets in Silver and Steel are public, correct? Yes. Okay. Could we go over to Sophia's uh, character sheet very quickly if if we have time? Uh, we because this time. is something I'm just trying to think of the best way of doing that here. Going to the campaign, I think. Um... Yeah, but this. So I am not in my account. I am in oh, a, a different account. Never mind. Uh, builds character uh, account yeah, um, that yes. isn't in that silver. So you know. So I'm just. I'm just. You know what? I, I got gotcha. I can. I can do this. We're gonna go. So it, it's a way of doing that that I never personally thought of. Um, for, for those myself. of you who don't know, we have a, a live shows page. And if you ever want to see any of the characters that are on any of our live shows, if you want to know when the next time we're going live with any of our Twitch streams, if you want to find out about Silver and Steel in general and all of the stuff, it's all yeah. there, including links to character sheets. So let's go to Sophia's. All right. Oh, yeah. That was a brilliant way to get there. I am very impressed with your your skills. I was thinking, how do I do this without wait having a minute. to? Wait like, I built a page. Ex- wait, wait! I made life for easy this. for myself. So, so here's Sophia. So scroll down, mm-hmm. and this is what I, 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 is kind of brilliant to me. I keep scrolling. I believe, like, let's go to spells. Um, yeah, let's go back up to your spells. And oh, here we go! Look at all those there. notes. So. I, I I love this, and this is kind of brilliant. Um, flavoring how you cast your abilities, your attacks. If you look at Acid Splash, I would have never thought to have done this on my notes. I always think technically or like in, in combat. Uh, this allows you, like, you can use your notes to describe exactly how you cast a spell. Like, for example, in this instance, this character lifts a glass jar full of green liquid from their belt, removes it with a circular utensil and blows an acid bubble. And it's just a nice reminder, especially if you have a very role-playing heavy uh, game and you want to flavor all your spells. If you want to like kind of establish that canon that is consistent every time, that's so fun to me. I feel like I I need to start doing this myself with these notes and, and thinking, and it forces you to think about like, how, how do I cast fear? Like, how do I cast acid splash? How do I cast firebolt? Um, and it's a, it's a, so you can either do it like mechanically reminding you of something that you, you should be doing with this spell or 
really calling out the really weird spell components that are involved in the casting of the spell as well. So it's, yep. a, it's a really fun thing to do. And having it right there, right in front of you without having to click into it, which you can with any of these, but you know what, it's, it's one less moment you have to take to get to the role playing stuff that you want to do. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's absolutely awesome. And that's, uh, if you had missed that, if you went into, if we go into our spells, uh, say I'm going to do something fun with Toll the Dead. We're going to go to Customize and Toll the Dead. And there's there's the notes section. And I could say, it sounds like a gong. And there we go. <laughs> and we'll close this. And it should, yep, show up right there. Uh, we had a couple like questions. A, sounds yeah. like a gong. Sounds like a gong. <laughs> Love it. I don't, you know, why not? Uh, we had a couple questions in chat. I'm not going to be able to get, we had a lot of questions in chat. I can't get to all of them, although I am going to answer this. Uh, Lord Garthon wants to know why is Eric Hooker the best race? Uh, because bird people. That's really it. Not. Because bird people. Um, clones are the best. Undead I mean, clones. I mean, listen, whatever you find fun is what you find fun i just find bird people amusing and a lot of fun we were um, recently talked about my main character being reincarnated and i would love to be a goblin i have a horrible feeling i would just roll era cocra and and the circle would be complete it would be complete <laughs> yes i i have as modius laughs, laughs. Um, we had a question about a bag of holding. Uh, is there a way to, Draven Dresden, is there a way to actually track things in a bag of holdings so who can track weight and item interactions? So the functionality of adding items to a bag of holding isn't quite there yet. However, if encumbrance is a thing in your game, or if you're looking for ways of tracking these things, this is where customizing some of these options, some of these items uh come into play the same mm -hmm. way with spells the same way with any equipment you can come and customize and i can say in bag of yeah like, so at least in the notes you could have that like say this i mean obviously it says bag of holding then you would be like i have 800 pounds of fish yep. not 800 five, you'd, you could have 500 pounds of fish at most um but yeah you could just list off the items Yep, and so you can actually go into your bag of holding and list off the items, or uh, like I just did, I just told my I told D and D Beyond my bedroll is in the bag of holding, and I made the weight zero because oh, very good. Yep, you know? and so yeah. I I look at the so if you want to have the quick list and be able to to see in your in in your equipment just like normal, that's usually what I do. Is I that's say brilliant. you know, and you can also custom. Uh, add stuff, you know, not just to your other possessions down here, but you right. can you can add a custom item in your inventory, just like everything else. Um, if you go into your manage equipment, custom I'm looking items, at all these the stuff that you're doing, and I am slacking. I am slacking. <laughs> well, and once again, some of this is not obvious if you ever are wondering is this a thing i can customize click on it that's Very, the yeah quickest way. The, the, the answer is yes which is like a so, like a nice sur surprise and delight thing <laughs> <laughs> like i don't know if you saw this but i have a, a custom item in here from avrin I, I got a coin in here it's a one pound coin that's a coin that's a that's a coin it's a it's a big coin <laughs> just donk yep and it's in my equipment and the way i got into my equipment instead of adding it to my other positions at the bottom is you come into manage equipment where all your equipment is yeah. and you say custom item and just like adding a custom attack or a custom anything else you can add a custom item and so i got this coin in here um and can or you do I can... that even as weapons too are these custom items uh weaponized if, if um if it's this... not quite weaponized right uh, okay, that yeah. you would have to go if you want With the custom to... actions or homebrew yeah either a custom action or a homebrew an actual weapon but you can come in here and if you get something weird that you want in your inventory that you want to be able to see as uh something with weight or a cost um for example orkira for a while had a a gnomish spectrometer that was worth a thousand gold pieces because she specifically needed it to scry on and so mm -hmm. it was important to have that as an equipment item that had a cost to it to be able to use that spell and so i could have just added it to my 
um, to my other possessions. And you can totally do that. But, you know, maybe you, you do track weight or you do track encumbrance or you do track mm-hmm. those, you know, what you're paying for things. So that's really good to have there. Um, and same thing, all of your equipment is customizable. So if you've got a dice set that's a special dice set, you know, this is this is Granny's dice set because, you know, I got this from a grandma. And so now I got Granny's dice set in there. It still works the same way. That's fantastic. Uh, and I'm pulling up questions here because there's a lot of questions. Um, we like questions. Yeah. A lot of this is asking about adding extra spells uh, that you don't have access to. Some of that will require a little bit of homebrew uh, because D&D <clears throat> Beyond does follow the rules that are yeah. in D&D. So if, you're, uh, if your DM gives you something that your character wouldn't normally have, you may need to do a little homebrewing. Um, but there's, there's a bunch of different ways to do that depending on the spell and what you want to add. Come to our forums. There's some options there. Uh, I, I will say uh, often... Uh... I have done in in particular cases, I will create just a copy of that spell and then click say warlock, right? Like I want this spell for the warlock for whatever reason, there's a different version of the warlock that exists that includes that spell. I'll create a, I'll call it variant or I'll call it something specific that like calls it out that this is okay. Like for instance, life transference is a thing um, I've got and I've got listed as variant. that allows me to cast that particular spell and all i did was just copy the spell collect a warlock save the homebrew and then add it and it took me literally about five five to ten seconds super easy it's a lot of that so if you if you can't do it right in the character sheet a lot of that is super easy to just homebrew um but um, a lot of that is stuff that you can add here. You can do things like adding extra spells in in certain ways. Um, we also got a couple questions about languages. So we've, we've kind of focused on this main screen. Right. And we'll, yeah. we'll look at some of the others. Some of the obvious things that people know about is adding custom skills. You can do that or uh, saving no, throws. You can I adjust. Don't, I don't feel like everyone is always aware of this. And this really comes up with Thieves uh and our sisters yeah so let's hey, how about we add thieves tools real quick to show everyone like how you add this uh, this extra item onto your your character sheet sure so uh you can come down here to skills and you you'll see it's it's managed skills it's where this little cog is um you click on that it pulls out the same uh sidebar you can go in and customize all of your current skills. Say your DM says you now have proficiency in acrobatics, even though you didn't before, Mm -hmm. you can override all of this and you can tell it um, that you are now, you know, you know, have a bonus to something um, that you are now half proficient, proficient, or even I'm an expert. I'm an expert at acrobatics now. (laughs) Just give yourself expertise. Oh, willy nilly. It'll show up blue to show that this is uh, something that you've customized, kind of the same way that a lot of the items in here, once you customize them, you'll see a little asterisk next to it. That's just to let you know they've been customized in some way. So if someone asks you, oh, how'd you get expertise in that? That's just the reminder of, oh, that I got as as a homebrew thing. And you can always go back in and see where that's listed Mm -hmm. um but yeah thieves tools is a thing that a lot of people want to add so we'll add a custom skill we're gonna call it these tools now there there is a thing i also have done with some eberron content where uh some of those dragon mark races give you a 1d4 and i don't always have time to remember that stuff so I will have a skill that gets the regular roll and also a 1d4. And I will flat out just go, I mean, the average is kind of two. Actually, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice because it's not really an average of two on a 1d4. But I would rather just have a plus two to that skill than roll a 1d4 personally as a as a, as a player. Um, I don't think you really need to talk. I mean, you should always talk to your DM, but I think that's a pretty fair... <laughs> Yeah, it's talk okay. to yeah, yeah. Your DM says, yeah, just add a plus two to that. We'll just keep that math easy. Yeah, um, it, it, it makes it a little bit more fluid because sometimes those things are hard to remember. And yep. also 1d4s. Oh, man, I am rough on rolling 1d4s. I don't know why I'm cursed. 
And plus, by adding that kind of stuff into D&D Beyond, they become rollable in D&D Beyond. So here we've just added our Thieves tools. Uh, because I'm a rogue, I'm going to say I'm proficient in them. I, I, I could look, but I'm pretty sure I am. It's a dexterity check. I have yep. expertise. Yep. Um, and so you'll you'll see it right there. I've got Thieves tools. We can just roll it right this from big, the sheet. Big plus 12. Exactly. Boom. And yeah. Can you adjust now? Is it always uh, in this order? also can it... it is currently all in this order so anything right. that you uh add to the character sheet will be at the bottom um and everything else is in the order that it is listed on all a right. regular D D character sheet yeah and then that's that's good because there is a history like a lineage of how you read a, a D D character sheet yeah uh this is also a thing that has been more recent is adding the disadvantage or advantage for um, skills if you have a reason why you would have disadvantage or advantage. So you'll see the little D show up. You can see it right here. Right. You click on that, it'll tell you why. So right. if you're like, why do I have disadvantage? What? Oh, oh, I'm wearing scale mail. Oh, yeah, it's heavy armor. That's why. Right. Uh, same thing with... When you a click customize, though, is there something that can nullify that? Uh, I'm just can... asking for me. That I'm unsure. I mean, I could probably it's give like, it a bonus. Oh, you can just add pro well proficient. Yeah, no, that's, that's yeah. That's you can add a bunch of stuff. Skill. Yeah, that's just you're wearing heavy armor. You have disadvantage on stealth checks. Yeah. So I don't think you can get rid of that. Right. Um, you just have to like if for, for some if there's some reason why you do ignore that you you just have to make a mental note. Yeah, that's that's a little too much. For that, I would probably say go in and homebrew some armor that doesn't give you a disadvantage anymore. Um, that, but yeah, that, and that's a very edge case. <laughs> exactly. And that goes back into the whole, if you're unsure, click on it. Um, oh, here we go. Here's my charisma saving throw, plus four. I, I can do a whole bunch of, of customization to all of that. Maybe I uh, have a bonus to it for some reason uh because my dm is awesome so you can you can click on that if you are a creature that has multiple speeds like kaiser here because they're awesome um <laughs> it's going to show your walking and your flying speed it's going to display your walking speed uh but maybe what you want is for your flying speed to always be available uh because my flying speed is awesome and so why should i show that all the time maybe uh you now could burrow uh why not so you got a burrow speed because um oh that's so creepy strange so there we go i now have, i now have a burrowing speed oh i want a burrowing speed now yep and i can so show much. that look i'm burrowing for 20 feet you can you can do all of that An undead but... warlock with a burrowing speed <laughs> this could also give you ideas for other characters like, you well, don't I want a speed. yeah yeah like well why wouldn't you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why why not dig through the ground? Um, we did have people asking about languages, which is how we got off of the main area. So yeah. proficiencies in language are the same way. There's a lot of people who have custom languages in mm. their campaign. You can go in and you can add uh, a new thing to your proficiencies. You can add something that's existing. So if you gain proficiency in armor's tools uh, or a language, say, um, the new proficiency is going to be one that is an official one that is listed, um, but it'll give you all of the options. So, hey, I, I want to be able to speak Umber Hulk. Why not? Why not? Um, or you can do a custom language. So you can come on in because my DM has said that I, I can now speak um, Spanish, mm -hmm. which in this world doesn't exist but now it does so now my character speaks spanish thanks there we go it's there and now you can see uh i speak eric Coker or in common spanish thieves can't and umber hulk because why not that's fantastic yep so you can go on in um and and that's the same for armor weapons and tools you can see i am proficient in cellos which is not a thing in D, &D normally but uh this eric Coker flies around with a cello because why not um let me take a look. Yeah, Yeti language. So yeah, someone yeah. in chat noticed the Yeti language. Can, can I can I dare put you on the spot sure. right now and make you add a, add a spell that you would not normally be able to cast? Okay. Yeah, let's do it right now. Let's just do it live. 
Uh, well, wait, 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 wait. We're focusing on character sheet, though. Yeah, we're focusing on the character sheet. We're not doing homebrew, and depending on yeah. what you're adding and what we we do. Like, yeah. fortunately, Kaiser is a wizard, and so wizards can just add spells to their spell book, and there's mm -hmm. ki there's ways of doing that just naturally. Yeah. Um, oh. Uh, for more basics, uh, we also had a couple of questions in chat that I, I want to get to, but uh, a lot of the stuff, what I've been showing is that how it shows up on the character sheet once you edit it. When you're going into your description, um, what actually shows up under Kaiser, uh, especially for some of these fields, are not a, a choose, but you can just input anything into them. Uh, gender, just so you know, is an editable field. So instead of putting male, female, non-binary, I actually just put their pronouns in there. So uh, you can do that for your characters and it'll actually just show up right under your character. Uh, and we had someone in chat, uh, all, ask, all Access had a request to show off rolling with advantage and disadvantage. Um, for those that don't know, you if can. so now I'm showing this on the PC, it's slightly different. If you're on mobile, it'll be a long press, but on PC, if you right click on anything that you roll a D20 on, it gives you this fun little, uh, pop-up so I can roll with advantage and it'll automatically roll the 2D20. It'll look a little odd here, but the math is correct. So I rolled an 18 and a 15 because mm. I have advantage, which and it tells me right here. And then it figures it out for you, and then you just know you got a 27. I got a 27. Now say I was to roll a natural 20, which I will try to not roll. I'm not gonna try because I just won't because I roll like crap. Uh, so say I rolled a natural 20 and I get to double my damage. Right. It, it'll do it automatically. So if I was able to roll a natural 20, you would see, whoops, um, if my dagger plus one rolled a uh, crit, it would automatically show a little blue box over this and it would say 2d4 plus four. But say I forgot, uh, you know, I was rolling off off screen or I, I used the, the dice roller down here, or maybe I'm gonna use my sneak attack. You can right click on the damage and you can tell it hey i got a critical roll on that and it'll automatically instead of 2d6 roll 4d6 oh fantastic and then it gives you this little blue box to indicate uh that you rolled a crit so I it's kind I of a visual even know that. i didn't even know yep so for those moments and where and it'll do all the math correctly so if you critical hit on my silvered like crossbow uh, it won't double the, the bonus. It'll only double the dice. If you do have a different way of doing crits, you'll have to keep that in mind. It's right. going to go by the, the rules as written for critical hits. Um, but that's that's always good to see. I think this is a good thing to re remind you, and this isn't custom customizing the character sheet, but like say you were using, um, okay, like a great sword, which is, I like simplicity. So I would be will I would rather uh, if I'm smiting you something that does a one d eight than a two d six just out of my pure laziness as a player, but um, you know we have the dice to our left as well, right? We can yep. press that button. Um, say I have a two d six greatsword, so we can go ahead and put two of those on there, and then we add uh, like four d eight in Eldritch Smite damage. Oh, and you want to, all okay. of, you can do it all at the same time. Yep. And then you can do the big roll, and it will add it all together for you. Boom! Big hit, twenty points of damage. Oh, then you add. Bad, yeah. Then you can add the you know whatever your your strength modifier is, your charisma modifier, uh, how whatever is modifying your damage at that point. You can do that pretty easily. Yep. I love that function. Yeah, being able to have that here is super useful. Um, I do want to show off, Bob. So <laughs> to tell me about Bob. So <laughs> say you're a druid with an uh, animal companion or a ranger, or you have a familiar, or you have a boat. I don't know, whatever you have. Most people now know about all of the, the extras tab and where you can put all that stuff in here. People forget you can customize a lot of this stuff. So yeah. Bob is, uh, so Kaiser has a, a, a pet dog named Bob. Uh, Bob has plot armor, and so uh, plot armor. Yes, so Bob plot is plot wise armor. Cannot be killed, <laughs> and so that is why Bob has eight hundred hit points. And, mm. and yeah, that's and, a very good point. That's actually fantastic because there are certain uh, when you're looking at these like kind of these lines, these things you don't want to explore as a player. 
this is kind of a good reminder for even the dm if they're looking at your character sheet like why does bob have 800 points oh i don't i shouldn't kill bob no why does bob have an armor class of 30 Be- because 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 plot uh, armor bob has plot armor so yeah. uh you cannot hit bob and if you somehow happen to hit bob bob has 800 hp because bob is my pet dog and you're not going to kill my pet dog just don't now, kill the pet dog don't, don't kill or don't. if you want to kill the pet dog then you get rid of the plot armor it's then fine you, you talk you know. to your player and you t- you know like if they need this john wick motivation yep and, and i mean and then okay so maybe maybe bob takes one damage okay Monster. i mean that's not so bad he's he stubbed his toes he whimpers i know and then you get you have barbarian rage for free <laughs> and now i'm a barbarian i'm gonna have to edit kaiser uh so yeah uh, bob you know i i gave bob a name you can change bob's size maybe bob is now gargantuan because Fantastic. because bob is huge you can change what kind of creature bob is you can change their alignment and you can do this for any of the creatures that you can add to extras so anything in here and and the same to vehicles so um if you have a boat uh let's let's add a galley kaiser should have a boat because a, a creature that can fly and walk and burrow needs a boat so there's there's my galley uh, same thing with the galley. You can rename your galley. You can add notes. It is a character sheet that um, has all of the the stats on it. Yeah. Uh, so you can do a lot of stuff like right in all the those weapons. Sheet. All those weapons are right there. I mean, it's fantastic. And uh, this is really handy for summoning monsters that you typically get go to. So like if you're a big necromancer, you can you can just pop in. And what I like to do as well, and we uh, we've talked about this before, I like to pop in how many i had this discussion actually with a druid of okay so if i cast summon uh you know these fey wild creatures i get x amount of sprites i get x amount of satyrs or this so i actually add them in the number that i would be able to cast um at that level as a reminder for myself so i'm like if i'm casting if i'm summoning all sprites i'm like okay i got four of those yeah um, and it helps for you to just kind of keep track. Or you can just, you know, include one of each type. But so if you're, you're a necromancer, you can put in a skeleton, a zombie. Um, you can add bonuses based off of, you know, whatever bonuses you apply to those things. That's also pretty cool as well. Yep. Um, just, just as nice little reminders, because sometimes you are casting a spell, especially that are, you know, new, these new un- unearth arcana variants these new summoning spells uh, you get a little bit more hit points and a little bit more damage depending on how what level you cast that at and that's customizable as well also a lot of people don't know this even though it's listed right here uh you'll often see me just clicking off of the sidebar to get rid of it but there is an actual hide sidebar which is useful yeah so you can just hide the sidebar i didn't know that (laughs) Oh, oh but wait there's more you can lock the sidebar. So say you really need your crew of sprites to be there all of the time, oh even if you're gonna God. click off of other things. But you know what? It's it's a little annoying for me right now because I want I want to be able to see all the uh, rest of your stuff. Well, I, I'm in the middle of combat. I need to see this stuff. Uh, so let's just move that sidebar over there. Well, I mean, like if we shrink, I mean, if we had like a giant screen, right? Or like we're using a TV or something like that. And we like shrink, we, we, we expanded the character sheet. So there's like extra room on the left and the right. That's perfect. You're basically just increasing the size of your real estate. Um, yeah, but not all of us have an extra wide monitor. And so being able to move this around, like I want to keep this well, up because I got bad my- for you. <laughs> I know, right? But like being able to lock that in place and so yeah. I can click anywhere I need to. And I'm in the middle of combat. So maybe, you know, I just need to be able to see what my actions are. And then if I need to make a saving throw, I just move it back over here and I can make a saving throw. Right. Um, this is also useful for druids. My crew of sprites. Yeah. <laughs> this is super useful for druids because when you are wild shaped as a druid, you yeah. need to use the, the wild shape stat block except for your mental stats. Your mental right. stats, you get to keep over here so maybe you want to lock this in place so right. that you can still have access to the stat block that you need except for the saving throws that you gotta have so yeah. this is really useful for that polymorphers don't forget you you get what you get when you polymorph into something <laughs> <laughs> let me take a quick look 
If you're a bunny, you're a bunny. <laughs> you're a bunny, you're yeah, well until you don't have any tip points left and then suddenly you're not a bunny anymore. Um let's see. Oh I mean, this should be uh standard by now, but you can get that sidebar for your character here uh by clicking on the the icon and it'll give you the the basic stats mm -hmm. you know here's here's kaiser uh, i can turn dice rolling on and off if for some reason i want it off i can get into editing my character i can edit the the fun stuff about the character sheet i can change my por portrait and i can even go into my preferences right from here and these are some of the, the good preferences uh what i especially like is being able to switch um, the spells show spell leveled scaled spells, which is really hard to say um, because often I want this off, except sometimes when I'm healing, it's really helpful to turn that back on. So being able to get it back on for a couple of clicks and then go back into my spells and do what I need to do and then turn it off again is right. super useful. Um, and then, of course, let's see if I can find it. If you're you a warlock, that never stops. <laughs> it, it never stops. I can turn on the party wizard, which is, uh, if you want to know what the party wizard does, you'll just have to go find the party wizard and find it for yourself. What is the history of the party wizard? <laughs> it was a fun Easter egg put in by a dev that just never went away, and now it's there. And if you if you have, um, I'm trying to think of some of the, the frames that it'll work with and some of the, the, the fun stuff. Um, I mean, you'll 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 see it on the the menu now. You'll see it having a little bit of fun up there. That's fantastic. But there are ways in where the party wizard will affect other things. <laughs> uh, let me take a quick look through some of the stuff. Uh, adding spells. A lot of people want to add spells. Um, which yes, spells, they get a little more complicated to show because some of it is part of your character. As I said, wizards get access to being able to add to their spell book that the DM can give them. While a lot of stuff, you, you do have to homebrew it because it's not, um, regular or adding spell slots is not, uh, uh something that you can do. Since um, everyone's asking, do you want to do it real fast? Cause it's a really easy thing to do real uh, quick. I know we're getting off the character sheet, but I think, I think we can do it in like five minutes or less well i will say so for your spell book you can um you can add in here so you can be looking for spells right. that as long as you have the spell slot for it you can add it but what about your... what about spells you can't cast as that class is that what they're asking I, I, it's a bunch of stuff. It's, it's oh, okay, a bunch of stuff okay, like okay, that. Okay. Like, yeah. you know, as a cleric, I can only cast spells that this specific cleric can cast. Yeah. Um. So adding that is, that's a little bit more homebrew. That would be what you talked about and where take yeah. the spell that you want to add. And it's really simple. We actually have some stuff on our forums um, that walk you through it. And it's literally just homebrewing the spell to add the subclass that or class that you want to be able to use it. And then making sure that your character character sheet allows homebrew which if you can't yeah. remember how to do that or if or if it does we'll go back into this is technically off the character sheet oh we've we've broken the show we've broken the show we've broken the uh, show we'll Which... go back home and you can see i i have homebrew content enabled so yeah by having homebrew content i can i can add all sorts of stuff um am i sharing I might not be sharing this character might not be sharing with anything that i have in my homebrew uh, you so have I might... some i have some weird things that pop into my when i get the character i have a lot of options to be dogs yeah to well ca cast cheese plates i know <laughs> because the homebrew is fun it, there are ways you can turn that <laughs> off too like you can share your homebrew or you can not share your private homebrew there are ways of doing that if it's a public homebrew you can uh the person who doesn't want it in their uh their character you can get rid of that stuff it's kind uh, of fun to see what your friends are up to <laughs> when you're making your character and these things pop up and you're like what you gotta be a little careful when you're a dm and you're creating something and you're sharing content and then all of a sudden your player's like what's and it this is really only yeah. applicable to uh spells with characters that have access to all mm -hmm. of the spells yeah. all the time like clerics 
for this yeah. because you have access to everything all the time. If I'm homebrewing a weapon, unless it gets added to your character sheet mm. or you go looking for it, yeah, it's not going to automatically use it. show yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but if I'm in my cleric and I'm looking through prepared spells or, you know, spells that I can prepare, if there's like, oh, here's breakfast and coffee. There it is. Yeah, yeah there's breakfast and coffee. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I do have it prepared. So, like, this this is this is showing up because I've got homebrew and, uh, it, but that's that's a cleric problem. <laughs> That's a cleric problem. That's kind of a wizard problem. That's a druid problem. Are those all the spellcasters that can redo their spells? I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. So so it's not so bad. You just need to be a little careful. The the game that I DM that is my podcast, my my cleric player on a regular basis, she's the one who found Create Cheese Plate. <laughs> She's like, what is the spell? I don't know where it came from. I'm like, oh, <laughs> is this okay. canon? Yeah. It, yes. Yes, it is now. <laughs> yes, it is. It is now because why not? Um, Some more questions. Uh, you cannot currently add a custom backdrop. You can uh, use a whole bunch of different backdrops. If we go back into our change backdrop, I have access and we to. We have it. a lot. I, I have a lot because, you know, I, I have all the books. And so uh, if you have pre ordered books that come with the, the backdrops, you have access to those. So you can very quickly change them out from here. Uh, but at the moment, there's not a way to do a custom backdrop. Mm -hmm. um, also, some of the UA feats that are out that are not fully supported are things that you can do in Homebrew. Someone's asking about the Elder adept feat uh does not give an option to choose the elders invocation um <laughs> sorry uh, someone wants me to plug my podcast i'll do that at the end so some of this you can do some of this you can't do just yet um as we update the things that you can do in the character sheet we will announce those but some of these are home rule things uh once again if you ever have a question about is this something that i can just alter and customize in the character sheet yeah. click on it take a look uh even if you can't immediately homebrew it it might pop up a little thing of you know some information just holding it over um you know hey how why do i have an 18 armor class oh i've got this armor here's my dex bonus and i got a shield so yeah. if you ever have a question of oh, how did what how did this happen and then you can customize from there pretty much everything on here is clickable yeah, and here, here's another um, here's another thing that I've done in the past. Um, this comes up as a wizard. So, uh, real quick, can you go to your equipment and unequip everything? Um, unequip. Un All right. Unequip your armor. Okay, there goes my scale mail, my shield. I'll just why not for you? I will unequip everything. All right. So let's go to let's go let's let's pretend you are a warlock and you have armor of shadows as an invocation. I would just go up to your armor class um take a quick peek at my dexterity i got dexterity of plus two so we got armor class of 12 and then so that so you, with the uh, armor of shadows you basically have mage armor and you can cast as often as you want i don't know why you would ever not have it up so that would be 13. so All i would right. put base armor at override base armor at 13 right oh, up there could... We could do or you can do an additional mi miscellaneous bonus, but that at least the override base armor might not interfere with anything else. I mean, it it depends on the way that you want to do it. There's positives and negatives to all of these. The way yeah. that you know, and the way that you do it, as long as you end up with the correct uh, armor class that you need, that's yeah. all that really matters. And, you know, and I'm just going to say, yeah. and then I say spell, and there we go. And then you do have to come in here and remember to to get rid of that once you're done, so that your yeah, armor class absolutely. goes back down. Uh, but yeah, you can add it as an additional magic so bonus. It, it would end up being a total of 15 is what you need to get at. And so like, yeah, if you're, if you're using something like an invocation like that, that's something I, I've done that's handy. But when I've forgotten, <laughs> and then I'm wondering, why do I have an armor class of 22 now that I have armor? Um, just click on your armor class and look at what you did wrong. <laughs> yep. And you can see right here, it says override. And then, yeah. and then hopefully you'll remember, you know, hopefully you put it in, you know, I cast a spell and forgot. 
<laughs> there we go. I love this. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then it just shows up right there. I, I forgot. This is useful for barbarians who get a bonus when they rage. This is Absolutely. useful for um this is it's useful, I think, for longer term things. Things that are just gonna last around. It's yeah. maybe easier to just remember. Um, but things like that and where all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast mage armor and I'm gonna have mage armor for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. And this day we may adventure in this day four or five different sessions in this day it's worth mm -hmm. just putting on in there yeah. um i'm just taking one last look yeah a lot of this uh so to close out if you have questions about whether this is something that you can customize in your character sheet just click on it and give it a try uh if you can't figure out how to do it easily because most of the stuff as you can see it's pretty obvious once you know to click on it and look yeah. um sometimes you just don't know to click on it and look but if you do have questions, come to our Discord, come to our forums, ask on our social media. There are, as as I mentioned at the top of this this episode, there are moderators standing by to help you. <laughs> and if you can't do it on the character sheet, it's probably a way we can homebrew it. And there are a ton of amazing homebrewers, not just our moderators, but people in the community who are on our forums and on our Discord who are happy to help you figure out the weird, awesome thing that your DM did for your character that now you need to put into your character sheet and you don't know how to do it. So come on by and we'll help you. It'll be fantastic. Lauren Urban, thank you so much. Thanks. And someone asked me to plug my my podcast. What you is find... your podcast? I have a podcast it's called Dungeon Drunks. It comes out every Monday. Uh, just do a search for it on wherever podcasts are sold or just come to my Twitter, which is Obo Lauren, where all of my D&D Beyond stuff is because I do things for D&D Beyond. That's what and I do. And we're on a show together. And we're getting we to are. play together finally. <laughs> Oh After. yeah, we're on a show called Silver and Steel where I I was stabbing things for you and now I'm I am healing you. And I gotta ask, is it weird to now play with the character that you altered so heavily over the last couple of, of oh, seasons no, of Beyond it, Heroes? Absolutely not. It's um the weird the weird thing, because uh Orkira and I got to play two two sessions together and then I became a DM. And then I turned my player into an NPC, a very annoying one. And I now we get like to play I, together again. <laughs> but that's why, like, I kind of, I'm looking forward to reconnecting that tissue uh, between the characters. You know, absence of trying to, like, set up a plot and a story uh, of just having these nice character moments. I think we have a lot more to come, and that's the only weird thing. It's not weird that I adjusted you. I don't think of it that way. Yeah. You're, you're, you're I mean, I don't mean it this way, but you're someone else's problem now. I mean, like, I pushed this, the boat out. You got your wings. Um, you got your air, kind of Eric Kokoro like stats. Mm -hmm. None of them are overpowered at all. But it's a uh, yeah. I know I don't think about it at all. You're you, you're your own creature. Which means eventually Jasmine is going to going to alter Orca in some way, and then I'll have had uh, four DMs adjusting my character. <laughs> four? Yeah, four, because four of DMs. Dustin and Devin on D four. So yeah. What did they do to Orcara? Well, you know, she shows up and people die, and then she had to. Yeah, there were things. There were things. The, I, I, I. There, there might be. You're just gonna have to go watch D4 and find out. Or you're gonna have to watch Silver <laughs> and Steel, which is show. Tuesdays at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific on our Twitch channel. It's and a great show. Uh, it's, oh, it's, I love it. Tonight is the Dark and Wish is the yes. season finale. Uh, B Dave, a fantastic dungeon master. Um, Really? I may not or may not uh, yeah, I may know some things that may be happening tonight you may want to check out the season finale of a darkened wished tonight uh it's going to be interesting it's going to be weird we're going to learn a lot of things about gods maybe and then we'll, we'll all watch critical role and then we'll watch critical role it's all a right. good day thursdays are good days thursdays are amazing days except for their trash day as well so i have to take the trash out but then Friday but morning. then you no longer have trash in the house and so thus it is a good day then i guess it's a good day all right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for watching Build's Character. This is such a weird way to end the show. <laughs> thank, thank you for listening to our trash talk. Mm. Uh, <laughs> we appreciate you. Uh, thank you, Lauren Urban, for wa walking us through the character sheet and how easy it is to use on the front end. Next time, we'll maybe dive into a little bit more of the homebrew stuff uh, that we were discussed. You know, adding spells, creating your own magical weapons might be something we might do next episode so uh, tell us what you want to to see more tell of us what you want we'll, yeah yeah tell us and we're gonna do it we're here for you we are your uh we are your handy dandy uh operators of D, D beyond and uh well our phones are open so 
All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.